Hello everybody, Mike Maloney with the Veterans Memorial Park and Digital Library. We're still here in uh, Kansas City at the uh, VFW National Convention and we're rolling right along through the states and we found somebody from New York, somebody very interesting, a past state commander, uh, Marlene. Uh, please spell your last name for us. R-O-L-L. -L. Thank you for that. And now please, if you would, go back and tell us where you grew up, uh, where you went to school, high school, how you got in the military, parents. Okay. Um, yeah, I, uh, I grew up in New York all my life. Um, actually did most of my growing up in Attica, New York. Yes, I did 11 years in Attica <laughs> before I got out. Um, mm. Let's see, my dad was in the military. He was Army, and he was an uh, Army cook. So it's always good to know those people because you don't ever want to go without. And um, after I went to college, after I graduated high school, went to college, I decided I wanted to go into the military. And so I just arbitrarily picked Army. and uh, cool. <laughs> Right? Cool. And uh, they were offering... Um, uh, bonus at the time for um, operating room technicians so it's a medical field uh, so I went in for that and um, I did eight years I went in in 86 1986 and got out in 1994 as uh, a Desert Storm veteran hmm. so you went to Desert Storm as a in medical yep as oh. a uh, an OR tech yep. excellent what you do after that Oh boy. Well, after that I came back home and I uh, designed and built and ran my own business for about 20 years. And uh, it was a boarding kennel. Uh, I was a groomer, certified groomer. And uh, the hands started getting tired and uh, so right around that time I started getting more active in the VFW. I, I joined the VFW right after I got back, uh, July, for, uh, July 4th, 1991. And uh, what post? What post? At like? that time, it was uh, Lancaster Post, New York, mm -hmm. uh, seven two seven five, and uh, it was just a little bit too far away. And I decided to transfer over to a closer post, which we have in Alden, and uh, met a great group of guys. And I will say guys because I was the only girl in that post, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they were great supporters and um, taught me a lot. Had me go up through the chairs of, of the post and eventually through the county, and I jumped district and went to state and became past state commander. Okay, and you went through the state chairs, surgeon on up? I or did. Okay, yeah. excellent. Uh, the, o the only thing I didn't do was state surgeon. Hmm. Ah. Um, I was uh, asked to be chief of staff two years in a row, so I uh, skipped that one. So, uh, But yeah, uh, state surgeon, uh, 2015, yeah. State commander, 2015, 2016. Um, I was a uh, sort of, um, Certified service officer for, um, or accredited service officer for uh, almost 10 years. Hmm. So, which is one of my passions is service officer work. Right. Did you have any success uh, as a state commander or through the chairs to, because uh, you know the military is 15% female and the VFW is not 15% female? No, it's uh, not. Did, did any, any help in the, that disparity? I mean, did it, did you? You know, um, or what, often what's on, your thoughts on, yeah. you know, often on the VFW look at women's committee, uh, trying to understand what it is that bring women into the VFW and, and some right. of our issues. And uh, myself and a few other of us have uh, ran that committee right down uh, to the last years. Um, I think legislatively that was the, the biggest thing for me on women's committee. Um, and we did bring in a lot of women. I, I, there's certainly a lot more here than when I first started out. I agree with that. Uh, I was, you know, my state convention I was usually the lone she-wolf yeah. in the room right uh, now I'm like one of ten right uh, which I think is a good direction uh, we need more yeah. um, I but I think it's incumbent on us to explain to them why, why? they need to join what's in it for them yeah. yes what, what's for them what it means for them right. what it means for them down the road what it means for our next generation coming up certainly certainly uh, what are you doing now with it, with the VFW, I use past um, state. Well, I say I'm I'm national legislative chair. Huh? One more year. Um, I just got off the state legislative, and interestingly enough, my commander decided to start the women's committee again, more of a membership kind of drive. But I've got other issues. I, I want to bring forth that information to women veterans as to why they need to join and how to join and right. and what how to make it beneficial for them. Right. You know, and what's what's good about it? So it's yeah, but not just for our women veterans, for all our veterans. Um, mm -hmm. I think they need to know more about legislative and service officer work and how they work together, 
right. and what that is kind of the basis of the VFW. Excellent, yes. Uh, any any special events happening in New York that uh, you want to publicize or put out there? or? No, I think the biggest thing going on in um, New York right now is we have uh, a new national cemetery. It's in uh, Pembroke, New York. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of interesting because we've really, other than Bath, was kind of low and out of the way, and now we've got one up in our area. So as a VFW member going around telling our VFW members we've got a new cemetery and what that means for them, that's huge. And uh, just started out on a new year finding out what the commander wants and where we're going with uh, what his mission is. Right. And you uh, spoke earlier about your father's service. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me his name and what he did and all that? Yep, Robert Snyder. Um, I don't know his years of service off the top of my right. head, but I do remember as a small child. Where was it? Um, uh, he was in uh, New York. We lived in Clarence at the time. Right. And I think he drilled out of Williamsville uh, Army Reserve. Right. So um, probably early 60s mm -hmm. was his time frame. Did he serve in Vietnam? Uh, he was. They were all packed up and ready to go when it ended. Well, yeah. so they were. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us, and uh, thank you for your service and uh, the way you continue to uh, serve. That's what we always uh, look for, and, and it's default. We know mm -hmm. if you're a veteran, you're doing something now, and it just. It's our DNA. You know, yeah. That's how it works. And I think uh, we have to get, we have to drive a little bit harder on the mental health and the right. things. We really have to, uh, mm -hmm. as veterans, reach out to our veterans that are struggling. Well, that's what we. We're here. Yeah. You know. We started uh, we started this mission uh, to to get more oral histories, mm -hmm. but as we went along, uh, we've learned that this is very important. This this kind of uh, thing that we're doing is is that information you're talking about reaching out to the female veterans and stuff like that. It's very important. We have nothing like that. There's no nothing set up like that. Right. We we strive. Uh, you're on the legislative committee, so I'm politicking mm -hmm. with you right now. We strive to. Uh, we want a channel. We want a veteran cable channel. Oh. There's 1,700 cable channels. Not one of them is dedicated to veterans, and we could do it easily, just like AFN did it in mm -hmm. Europe with the VA and everything. Right. We just got to get with the politicians and make it happen. And make it happen. Yeah. That would, you know, that would that would help us with a lot of information, information getting it out dissemination, there. Dissemination, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Information is, uh, is and, key. Yeah. You know, it's key to our our right. organization as a whole to surviving. Because quite frankly, we're failing at it right now. We're, yeah. We're, you know, there's people paying out of pocket for stuff they can get from the VA. Yes. Uh, it's it's just you know I, I've seen it. I you know I know you were a service officer. I did yeah, some uh, yeah. I did some stuff like that too, and it, it, it's to me terrible that. Uh, that information is not getting out to the people that need it. Right. Yeah. Right. It's a void there. And and, and it is, and, and and it's it is odd in this day and age to be able to still come across veterans that have served who don't know that they're eligible for certain benefits. Absolutely and, right. and yes. when I'll ask them, well, you know, how are you about this or how are you about that? And they're like, I you know, are you service connected for that? And they're like, hmm. No, I don't think I'm eligible for that. And I'm like, Well, guess again. Yeah. And it's a membership draw too because yeah. Uh, new veterans, they don't go into our buildings, but they're on their phones. Mm -hmm. When you kill their phones. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I always tell, um, because I was on membership for many, many years. Right. And I always told them, when you set up a table for membership, you take your post service officer along because that's, that's, the, that's the key. Yeah. You know, when, the, when they can ask people, you know, about their service and, and did you know and do you know that you could be service connected or it, it could be potential and then hand them off to a service officer, mm -hmm. now you've done something for them. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And then that's what's, you know, that's what's in it for them is when you can do something. Right. Right. Okay. Well, again, thank you. Have a wonderful convention. And very, it was a pleasure talking to you. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.